20 of the best jazz musicians in the country, like vocalist Norman Winston, who's a member of the band, not a featured singer, and a massive brass section that includes Henry Lowther, Keith Christie and Dave Haller. The band is conducted by another trumpet player, Dave Hancock, and it's typical of Kenny Wheeler, who's one of the most self-effacing jazz musicians ever, that he should prefer to hide himself in his own band instead of leading from up front like Harry James. He does write all the music, though, and for tonight's session, the band blasts off with Hey OK. <laughs> thrilled to write all the music for a half hour broadcast and have it played by good musicians and, but naturally with so many people wanting jazz broadcasts uh, you can only have about one a year so but I've kept it up regular for about I don't know how many years I think about eight years or something and I really enjoy doing it but uh, it's a bit of a labor of love because you have to write everything yourself for basically nothing and copy it and ring up all the musicians and but it's still worth it in the end, I think. Although jazz is his real love, Kenny Wheeler makes his living as a session musician. This morning I did a commercial for Chrysler, I think it was Chrysler Cars. And tomorrow I'm doing a Val Dunican television show. Earlier in the week I did some radio jingles, I think for the States, I'm not sure. I mean, the session musician doesn't usually know what he's going to play when he arrives at the studio to play it, he's usually booked by a telephone, by what's called a fixer or a contractor in politer terms, I guess. And nine times out of 10, they just say, be so-and-so at 10, 10 o'clock till one. They're usually three hours, these sessions. And, and when he arrives there, he doesn't know what it is he's going to play. So you have to try and be prepared all the time to play the most difficult music. And the standard is very high amongst the session musicians. But again, if I had my choice, I would sooner play my music for a living, you know, jazz music or whatever. But that is uh, a labor of love, jazz music for everybody who's involved in it.
My father just brought home a cornet one day and gave it to me. He didn't advise me or ask me to take lessons. He just gave it to me, and I looked at it for a few weeks and before I started to do anything with it, because he was a semi-professional musician. He played in one of Paul Whiteman's other bands in the 20s in New York. I began gradually to hear about these strange jazz people like, you know, your Buck Claytons and Louis Armstrongs and all the famous ones. You know. I realized right away that that was for me. Do you practice? Yeah, faithful, regular. Well, you have to on the trumpet, as most trumpet players will admit. You have to keep it up every day. Oh, well, <laughs> I just I usually start off with a, about five minutes with the mouthpiece and then... Mm. That's sort of a horrible sound. And then I do a quick couple of minutes of this. neighbors say well luckily it's not too bad uh, I think the walls are fairly thick and there's not too many on either side uh, some very nice Pakistan people next door who don't say anything so <laughs> and the lady next door plays the piano a bit so she's amenable to music anyway so. you play trumpet and flugelhorn can you explain the difference between the two well this one's uh, a little bit shorter in length as you can see and uh, the sound it produces is generally a wider, warmer, softer sound. Trumpet is a more compact, hard sound. Although I think a trumpet uh, can be made to do probably more things with sound than a flugel can. I just like the flugel for playing jazz. Sometimes you get in a place where you have to play jazz and the sound is very dry and dead and you play a trumpet and it sounds sort of, to your own ear, kind of nasal and tight. But if you play the flugel, at least to your own ear, it sounds uh, warmer and bigger. And I can't play unless I'm getting a good sound to myself. For most English musicians, the international jazz scene offers opportunities that just do not exist at home. This year, Kenny Wheeler was invited by pianist John Taylor to work with him and his wife Norma Winston on some new music which they would record in Oslo for a German record producer. Over in Germany or Europe, I think that uh, young people get to hear not only their rock and roll and their pop, but they get to hear a much more varied kind of music. I mean, I don't say that Radio 1 should play jazz all day. But, I mean, even if you turn on the radio here occasionally and at night you can pick up a French or Dutch station which might play a jazz record, a pop record, a classical record, you know. But England, to me, seems to be a country of pigeonholes, and they pigeonhole jazz right out of having no pigeonhole anywhere. So. So we're rehearsing I seem to have had an awful lot of publicity outside of England and I get called to the continent a lot now to do things which pay very well. I mean, perhaps maybe in a couple of years I might be in a position where I can do 
just what I want to do, which is you know play jazz music of, of the kind I'd like to play. Mm -hmm. 